In this video, we're going to talk about how to run for school board. A lot of people try and do that. Most fail. If you'd like to know how to run and win a race for school board, stick with me because I got a lot to share with you. We'll start with why it's important to know the job, courting those who care, coming up with a compelling campaign message, how to advertise that message, and how to raise the money to pay for it. Let's first start with knowing what the job entails. There are lots of school jurisdictions in the United States. Most school boards have jurisdiction over the taxes that are assessed to pay the bills of the school corporation. They have some say-so in how that money is spent. They got a lot of say-so in what teachers are paid. They have a lot of say-so in how much of that money ends up actually in classroom instruction. Each school jurisdiction has a certain number of administrators and teachers and school support personnel. Each school district gives test scores to students. What are the test scores of the students going to school in your jurisdiction? And how do they compare to other school jurisdictions in your state? It is incumbent upon you to know that because during the course of a campaign, there are people who are going to ask you about these things and how to fix them. And you can't be clueless and expect them to vote for you. The second thing I'll mention is not only being an expert on what the job entails, it's being an expert on your jurisdiction. Who are the people who live in your district? What is their demographic profile? What are the past turnout patterns in school board races? What are they most passionate about? What is their demographic profile? There are lots of places to get that, but this is basically what you need to know about people in your jurisdiction. How old are they? What is their income level? What is the percent of businesses and homeowners to renters in your community because that affects how property taxes are administered. What is the race component of your jurisdiction? What is the ethnic component of your jurisdiction? What is the education level of your jurisdiction? The more you know about your jurisdiction, the better candidate you will be and the more sensitive you will be to the particular concerns that each one of these demographic groups brings to the table when they're voting in a race for school board. There are certain interest groups that need to be courted when you are running for school board and they are interest groups that really do care passionately about who sits on the school board. They are fellow school board members. They are the parents of kids who attend the schools. They are the teachers who have jobs in that school system who may chafe at being told how to do their job. They are an important interest group and sometimes they can be very loud and very noisy and very influential if you manage to cross the teachers unions or the teachers that live in your school district. They have an outsized say in it. And then there are the taxpayers, and this is where it comes in. It's why they're very sensitive. Most school corporations get a lot of their money from property taxes, and property tax owners or property owners are pretty sensitive about the tax bill they pay. Usually they pay it because they have to, but they like to know they're getting value for your money. And you will hear something about that during the course of a school board race. There is the message component of your campaign. Why do you want the job? Uh, what are you running to change if there's a problem? Uh, what problem is it that you're going to fix? If you think teachers deserve higher pay, how are you going to pay for it? If you think the students or some of them are not being well served, how are you going to fix that problem? It will be incumbent upon you to tell voters why you want the job. So I'm going to break this down into five different questions that voters expect you to answer for them during the course of a campaign for school board. What qualifies you to sit on the school board? What about your background says that you can be somebody who's going to contribute to its functioning? 
Well, tell me about your, your values and your moral code. How do I know that your values are in sync with my values? How do I know that you really do care about kids that have been left behind? How do I know that you really care about how they're performing on test scores? How do I know that you really care about recruiting the best and brightest teachers possible to this school district? There are issue positions that you can talk about that you highlight, what is the problem that you're going to fix? Is there a wrong that you are passionate about writing? Is there some sort of injustice in a school district that you want to correct? How are you going to improve the quality of life for everybody in your community through a school system that better educates the children going through it? A couple of other components to your message that I'll mention here. Is there something that you can tell voters that lets them know what makes you tick, that lets them know why you are passionate about fixing this problem on the school board or a problem that you mentioned, something that you can tell them that lets them know they can trust you to do the right thing on a vote when they may not be watching. And finally, if you have opposition in a school board race, and most likely you will, what is it that you can say about yourself that's unique, something that says to voters of all the choices that you have in this race, this is why I should be your choice. Something about your background or your approach or your ambition to fix a problem that makes you stand out, makes you just a little bit different than all of the other candidates that are running. We call that your unique selling proposition. And if you have one, it's incumbent upon you to publicize that. There are school board races that are what we call kind of low dollar affairs. They are don't involve thousands of voters. You can easily knock on the doors of people likely to vote and disseminate your message that way and supplement that with some organic and free social media, perhaps Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, YouTube, you can do it that way to disseminate your message, but there are also school districts that have hundreds of thousands of voters. And if you're trying to reach that many people, you're gonna to have to do some paid advertising. You need a budget and you need to figure out what paid advertising you're going to do and what it costs so that you have a budget that's worth the paper it's written on. Certainly, you can advertise on Facebook, you can advertise on YouTube. There is what we call digital advertising, where you make ads appear at certain websites when people in your community are checking the weather or the local news. There is radio that sometimes candidates use. There is what we call persuasion mail, which is a common tool used in school board races where you send people a piece of paper with some nice looking pictures and a little bit about your background and your agenda. Sometimes there are candidates who do use one of the four forms of television, OTT, CTV, cable TV, commercial television. Once you have your message and you've decided your demographic target, it's up to you to figure out a way to get the message they need to hear to them because they're not going to wake up wondering about you every morning of the day. They're not going to wake up wondering about you every morning of the week. I'll add this, that if you have a paid advertising budget, you will have to raise money to pay for it. There are lots of ways to do that in a political campaign. If it's a high dollar race, you're going to have to solicit some of those donations yourself. You're going to have to ask your friends and powerful people in your network perhaps to raise some money on your behalf. You can send letters to people asking for a contribution to your campaign for school board race. You can have cocktail parties, you can have dinner parties, you can do celebrity events. There are lots of ways to do this. I have a video that I would invite you to watch that go into great detail about that. You'll find that in the description of this video, how to raise money for a political campaign. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I have a free gift for you and it's this how to run a grassroots political campaign. Click the link and have at it because you're gonna learn some things that supplement what I told you in this video.